So let's say we have a, uh, a toolpath template like this one here used for these uh, double step shaker doors. And this toolpath template is not quite what we want. It's, uh, we want to change the diameter of the tool that's being used and a couple other things. So how do we do that? Well, what I like to do is to go back to the original file that was used to create the toolpath template. In this file, I mean in this case, I go back to uh, the original CRV file uh, called Double Step Shaker Door, or I think I've actually got a, a little modified one here. And, and so, yeah, so I got that file, and what I'm going to do with it, first thing, is just get rid of all the toolpaths. And I'm going to take a look at the panel pocket. Okay, so that, when I double click that toolpath, it's using a 3 8 end mill. So I want to go to the select, which will open up the tool database. I want to create a new end mill. New tool type, end mill, diameter one and a quarter inches, uh, pass depth, uh, I'll put it at a half inch for now, D depends on the tool. I'm Step over, let's put that at 75%, spindle speed, let's go with 15,000 RPM, feed rate of 275, plunge rate of 55. Uh, tool number, that's a good question. Can't, I should have outlined all this already. I'm going to leave it at three, but that may have to be changed in a minute. Okay, so I'll click OK and click Calculate. All right, so now we see it's doing that operation you know with a lot a lot fewer passes right but still not exactly what we want um, I didn't let that finish because it was it's uh, taking a lot of time but what we want to do is an offset pass on this one instead of a side-by-side -side pass so we'll click calculate and then we'll just uh, preview that toolpath as quickly as possible. I need to change the preview speed. It's a little too slow. A lot too slow. Let's see. Where is that preview speed? Uh, yeah, here we go. Toolpath preview simulation quality. I'll just put it on high for now and uh, we'll, uh, we'll preview that again. That's better. That gets us going a little bit faster. Okay, so now let's take a look at the other toolpaths in this job. Shaker step detail. Okay, let's preview that one. Okay, that'll give us some detail. Then we have the, the shaker step. Now that shaker step is done with a half inch bit, so that's fine. No need to make changes to that just yet. There may not be. Okay, then we have the pocket that we just did and the final cut. Uh, but we have two issues here. Well, one issue really. Uh, and that is we got to get rid of these tabs. We got to come in here and do some, uh, some detail work. Um, so what we want to do is come in here with that, we might can do it with that half inch bit. Let's see, the shaker step, same bit used for the shaker step, which is the half inch tool, and it's tool number two. So let's try, I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to call this inner step. For now, that's what I'll call it. Um, 
and I'm going to double click that path and I'm going to make sure that I choose the right vector shape and that's this one to be applied to. So let's hit calculate and preview selected toolpath. Now that did not do what we needed to do because I didn't change the depth. If, if you notice, if you look a little deep, I mean a little, if you zoom in, uh, we'll, you'll see we left a little tab here and, and uh, didn't, quite, didn't quite do what we wanted. So what I'm going to do is double click on inner step, change that cut depth to 0.375 and hit calculate. Okay, and then I'm going to preview the selected toolpath again. Okay, that's uh, a little bit better in some respects. But now we have these corners here that need to be cleaned up. Now, those um, obviously can't be done with a half an inch tool. So we take this bit, this, the shaker step detail, uh, and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'll call this. Now I just uncheck that just because it makes it easier for me not have to scroll like crazy. And I'll call this inner step detail. And double click on inner step detail. Switch to the 2D tab. Click on the inside shape and hit calculate. Uh, also we need to change the depth to 0 0.375. Calculate again and preview the selected toolpath. So now let's see how that looks in the corners. So I'm zooming in with the mouse wheel. Click down and hold the mouse wheel to pan. And it looks like that got us the detail we needed in those corners. Now the preview does show a little sliver of material here but in in reality uh, there won't be any any material shown there. Uh, if we did try to correct that it would it would simply just be for cosmetic purposes in the simulation and in the case of what we're doing here that really wouldn't uh, really wouldn't be practical. Um, if it does leave slivers, you know, when you cut, then then that can be addressed a different way with one more toolpath operation. Not a big deal, but not really necessary to show right now, I don't think. Um, okay, now we can uh, we can call that good, I believe. We do need to check and see what tools are being used. So the shaker step detail is Tool number one with an eighth inch end mill. Inner step detail, tool number one, eighth inch end mill. Okay, good. Pocket sharpen, tool number one, eighth inch end mill. Fine. Shaker step, tool number two, half inch end mill. Inner step, tool number two, half inch end mill. Panel pocket, tool number three, one and a quarter inch end mill. And final cut, Tool number three, three-eighths end mill. Okay, so there's our problem. That's, there's the problem we're going to have. Uh, so we've got tool number one, tool number two. Then we have tool number three for the final cut, the three-eighths end mill. So we want to change the panel pocket to actually be tool number four. So I'm going to click Edit and tool number four and click OK. I'm going to recalculate that pass. And now everything should go the way it's supposed to. Now one thing, this inner step detail, going 3 8 deep with the 8th inch tool, I'd rather that happen after we do our, our major pocketing, I believe. So I'm going to select the panel pocket, and bring that up in the, 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 the order in which things are done. And 
And that's being done in one pass, three eighths deep, inch and a quarter bit. Should be fine. Um, okay. And then we can come in with our, our detail. See what this pocket sharp. Oh, okay. I actually already had had that in there, so we don't really need the intercept detail pass because it's actually the same thing that I've duplicated. So I'm gonna delete that tool path. So now we have the panel pocket first, then the shaker step detail. Pocket sharpen, yeah, which should be fine. Now let's just take a look at our speeds. We're going maximum quarter inch deep per pass, 100 inches per minute at 18,000 RPM, and that should be fine. So it'll actually do two passes to do that detail work. Um, and close. Then we do the shaker step. Which passes the half inch bit around that around that step and, and gets that done. Um, then the inner the inner step passes the half inch bit and cleans up a little bit in those corners, cleans up that last little bit. And then of course we have our final cut with the three eighths bit. Uh, we probably could save some time by you know doing everything with the three eighths bit and leaving out the half an inch bit so maybe that's something we can look at in the future but for now we'll leave it like this and we'll use the four tools that we have available so now I'll do one final preview of this job and I'll uh, I'll do it at a little slightly slower speed I'll say extremely high let's see if we like the speed that it goes let's say preview all toolpaths so it's hogging with the inch and a quarter bit. Doing our detail work with the eighth inch bit. Doing the step and then cleaning up those corners and doing the final cut. And that looks to me to be what we need. So I'm going to hit close here. And I'm going to say, well, I want to do save all visible toolpaths as a template. But right now, none of the toolpaths are visible. So I'm going to click this button, and now they're all checked, which means they're all visible. We now see them on the screen. So now we go save all visible toolpaths as a template. Okay, and so I am going to give this template a name. I'm going to call this Double Step Shaker Door. And let's just call it V. Well, we can call it whatever we want, as long as we remember what it's called call it with a 1.25 hog which means we're hogging with that one and a quarter inch bit okay so I click Save now that toolpath template is saved and I'm also going to save this job double step shaker door 1.25 hog I want it to have I don't know the same name as our toolpath template uh, I'll call this not template, but I'll call this master, maybe, I don't know. That's all personal preference as far as what you name stuff, but I try to give myself some idea so when I come back and look at something later, I don't, I'm not totally lost. Okay, so now I hit close and file new in vCarve. So we got a brand new clean slate here, okay? Back in Cabinet Parts Pro, we have our nester, everything's nested. Nothing has changed here, and nothing needs to change here uh, at this point. And so we go to Tools, Copy to Vectric, ready to paste into Vectric, Edit, Paste. Okay, great. Now we go Template File. We want to select the new template that we just made, which is the inch and a quarter hog, and click OK. Everything else should be the same from what you know we had done earlier uh, which is from a video that I recorded a few minutes ago um, that video I believe is called cabinet parts pro to Vectric 
um, I'll include a link in this fit you know in the description and comments of this video as well um, so I'm gonna output it to the to the same test folder that I had before but first I'm gonna delete the files that are there that we're not gonna use and click OK okay so it just blitzed through all five of those sheets and uh, we can actually come in here and look closer at that uh, first sheet and we see that it's passing through with the big bit and it looks like it's doing everything that it's supposed to when we look through the tool paths we got panel pocket shaker step detail pocket sharpen shaker step inner step and final cut so all that looks good now question is did it spit out the code that the machine needs so let's look at that folder okay March 4th 2019 9.09 p.m. and it did exactly what it's supposed to do so we should be able to actually process from uh, from what we've uh, made there and that's all without making so far uh, without having to make any changes to our uh, Cabinet Parts Pro script. All we did there was change our toolpath template in VCarve Pro. So that's that's how we make a change to our toolpath template uh, without actually having to revisit or, or reprogram any scripts in Cabinet Parts Pro. So pretty cool. I hope this hope this helps if you have any questions let me know and uh, there will be more videos to come on on this topic about interacting between cabinet parts pro and vcarve pro as well as making customized scripts or changes and adjustments so stay tuned <laughs>